Good morning, everyone. Hopefully you had a very blessed Christmas celebration and welcome to our first Sunday after Christmas, which of course is the day after Christmas. So today we're looking at heart-filled thoughts as we take a peek at St. Luke's Gospel and what that will mean. Remember, please uh, sign in for your attendance and include everybody that's watching online. Uh, remember, we are tracking that attendance uh, here at St. Stephen's. So let's get going with our opening song. We make our beginning in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We read responsively Psalm 111. Praise the Lord. I will give thanks to the Lord with my whole heart, in the company of the upright in the congregation. Great are the works of the Lord, studied by all who delight in them. Full of splendor and majesty is his work, and his righteousness endures forever. He has caused his wondrous works to be remembered. The Lord is gracious and merciful. He provides food for those who fear him. He remembers his covenant forever. He has shown his people the power of his works in giving them the inheritance of the nations. The works of his hands are faithful and just. All his precepts are trustworthy. They are established forever and ever, to be performed with faithfulness and uprightness. He sent redemption to his people. He has commanded his covenant forever. Holy and awesome is his name. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. All those who practice it will have a good understanding. His praise endures forever. We continue with our confession and absolution. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. If you, O Lord, kept a record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? 
but with you there is forgiveness, therefore you are feared. Since we are gathered to hear God's word, call upon him in prayer and praise, in the fellowship of this altar, let us first consider our unworthiness and confess before God and one another that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, and that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together, as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God our Heavenly Father, seeking his grace for the sake of Christ and saying, God be merciful to me, a sinner. Almighty God, have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins, and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. And hear the good news of our loving Heavenly Father, for He indeed has had mercy upon us and has sent His Son Jesus to die for us. So in the stead and by the command of my Savior Jesus Christ, I forgive you all of your sin in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Old Testament reading for the first Sunday after Christmas is from Exodus chapter 13. The Lord said to Moses, Consecrate to me all the firstborn, whatever is the first to open the womb among the people of Israel, both of man and of beast, is mine. Then Moses said to the people, Remember this day in which you came out from Egypt, out of the house of slavery, for by a strong hand the Lord brought you out from this place. When the Lord brings you into the land of the Canaanites, as he swore to you and your fathers, and shall give it to you, you shall set apart for the Lord all that first opens the womb. All the firstborn of your animals that are males shall be the Lord's. Every firstborn of a donkey you shall redeem with a lamb, or if you will not redeem it, you shall break its neck. Every firstborn of man among your sons you shall redeem. And when in time to come your son asks you, what does this mean? You shall say to him, by a strong hand, the Lord brought us out of Egypt from the house of slavery. For when Pharaoh stubbornly refused to let us go, the Lord killed all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both the firstborn of man and the firstborn of animals. Therefore, I sacrificed to the Lord all the males that first opened the womb, but all the firstborn of my sons I redeem. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle is from Colossians chapter 3. Put on, then, as God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, compassion, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience, bearing with one another. And if one has a complaint against another, forgiving each other. As the Lord has forgiven you, so you must also forgive. And above all these, put on love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony. 
and let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which indeed you were called in one body, and be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, teaching and admonishing one another in all wisdom, singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs with thankfulness in your hearts to God. And whatever you do, in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the second chapter, Glory to you, O Lord. When the time came for their purification according to the law of Moses, Mary and Joseph brought Jesus up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord, as it is written in the law of the Lord, every male who first opens the womb shall be called holy to the Lord, and to offer a sacrifice according to what is said in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon, and this man was righteous and devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit was upon him. And it had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. And he came in the Spirit into the temple, and when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him according to the custom of the law, he looked, he took him up in his arms and blessed God and said, Lord, now you are letting your servant depart in peace according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation that you have prepared in the presence of all peoples a light for revelation to the Gentiles and for glory to your people, Israel. And his father and his mother marveled at what was said about him. And Simeon blessed them and said to Mary his mother, Behold, this child is appointed for the fall and rising of many in Israel, and for a sign that is opposed, and a sword will pierce through your own soul also so that thoughts from many hearts may be revealed. And there was a prophetess, Anna, the daughter of Phanuel, of the tribe of Asher. She was advanced in years, having lived with her husband seven years from when she was a virgin, and then as a widow until she was eighty-four. She did not depart from the temple, worshiping with fasting and prayer night and day. And coming up that very hour, she began to give thanks to God and to speak of him to all who were waiting for the redemption of Jerusalem. And when they had performed everything according to the law of the Lord, they returned in, into Galilee to their own town of Nazareth. And the child grew and became strong, filled with wisdom, and the favor of God was upon him. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Hey boys and girls, it's Deaconess Kim with the children's message for you today. Did you have a good Christmas? I hope so. I hope you got some nice presents and enjoyed some yummy food and spent some time with your family. Maybe you even played a game like Simon Says or Follow the Leader or something like that. And I hope you took just a moment to say thank you to God for all of it and especially for baby Jesus, the best gift of all. Now, during Christmas, we talk a lot about baby Jesus in the manger. It's a wonderful picture of God's gift to the world, the gift of Jesus, right? But did Jesus stay in the manger? 
No, of course not. That little baby Jesus grew up into grown-up Jesus, and grown-up Jesus had a lot to do. He taught people and healed people and raised people from the dead. He walked on water, and he turned a little bit of food into enough to feed thousands. Now, his biggest job, though, was to get rid of sin so that all people, people like you and like me, could be saved. God gave us the gift of Jesus, the baby in the manger, and that baby grew up and saved us all from sin and the devil. Because of our Messiah Jesus, we get to look forward to living with God forever, and we call that heaven. But what does that mean for us here today, right now? Does it mean I can do anything I want to do until someday when Jesus comes back again? No? When what? Now, one of the first things that the Bible tells us that Jesus did as a grown-up was to invite people to follow him. Why do you think he did that? Did Jesus need help? Not really. He's God. He doesn't need our help. But Jesus wanted people to follow him. He wanted us to see how we could live like Jesus. So that's our challenge, isn't it? We know that we're forgiven because of Jesus. So now our challenge is to live it. Jesus calls us to be his followers. It means we should do our best to love people like Jesus did, following in Jesus' footsteps. Will you pray with me? Dear God, thank you for the gift of Jesus. Help me follow Jesus every day. In Jesus' name, amen. To you, online viewers, chosen by our Heavenly Father for His good purposes in this life, empowered by the Holy Spirit for obedience to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, grace and peace be to you. So, I hope you had a very Merry Christmas. I hope that you are had a great time celebrating our Lord and Savior Jesus' birth. So, Today's kind of an awkward day. I mean, it's kind of one of those strange 
occurrences where we have Christmas Eve, Christmas Day, and then the first Sunday in Christmas is on the 26th. So in my opinion, this is kind of a, a little bit of a strange sort of day. Because, um, of course, everybody knows the day after Christmas is one of those other big shopping days. Now, there's no way in the world that you could convince me to go out with those crowds and, and trying to do all those exchanges or something along the lines of that. But if you're really into those deals, well, this day might actually be even better than a Black Friday. But the day after Christmas, I think, also sets up a little bit of contrasting of events celebrating our Savior's birth is a big day, a big day for a lot of people with their family and friends. And then the next day, the celebration is sort of over, as friends and family might not be as present as they were. Hopefully they still are for you today. But you understand what I mean. There's this great buildup for this day, and maybe perhaps a little bit of a letdown for the days that follow Christmas. So how do we keep that Christmas feeling? Well, we stay focused on the promises connected to that babe in the manger. That is, we know Jesus is coming again. That's that second advent where when Jesus comes again, we will have that everlasting Christmas celebration with our friends and our families, so we stay focused on God's promises, because God's promises always are true. Simeon was always focused upon the promises of God. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon, and this man was righteous and devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit was upon him. See, Simeon knew that he would see the Lord's Christ. And in fact, he was promised that he would see the Lord's Messiah. So that's pretty cool. Wouldn't that be awesome? I can imagine that he was pretty excited to know that particular thing. Remember, as the St. Luke's Gospel tells us, is that, that he was truly looking forward to this day, that it had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would indeed see the Lord's Christ, that he would one day with his own eyes behold his Savior. So we can certainly imagine his excitement. But one thing I think that maybe we forget about with this is that, boy, if he was known or told that he would see the Lord's Messiah, then you would think he probably wanted to make sure that he knew the signs. He knew all about God's promises, God's promises from of old. So when Mary and Joseph come to bring Jesus according to what was required by the law, and as they come into Jerusalem to the temple, and they bring Jesus there, it probably was no surprise to Simeon that Jesus was born in Bethlehem. But you, O Bethlehem, Ephrathah, who are too little to be among the clans of Judah, from you shall come forth for me, one who is to be ruler in Israel, whose origin is from of old, from ancient days. Therefore he shall give them up until the time when she who is in labor has given birth, and then the rest of his brothers shall return to the people of Israel, and he shall stand and shepherd his flock in the strength of the Lord, in the majesty of the name of the Lord his God. And they shall dwell secure, for now he shall be great to the ends of the earth, and he shall be their peace. So likely when Simeon and Mary and Joseph had a little bit of interaction, he would not have been surprised to hear that Jesus was in fact born in Bethlehem, fulfilling those Old Testament prophecies just as it had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit, that he would see the Lord's Christ, the promised Messiah. And also remember, during Herod's time, when he was trying to figure out where the baby was born, the king that was going to be a threat to his kingdom, he also went to those biblical scholars there. But you know, I'm sure that Simeon would have also been aware of the conflict that would be associated with Jesus 
Because you find that in the Old Testament too, like verses in Micah, where God speaks against His people for not following faithfully His will for their lives, losing out on the blessings of God's promises. Micah 6 says this, Therefore, I strike you with a grievous blow, making you desolate because of your sins. You shall eat, but not be satisfied, and there shall be hunger within you. You shall put away, but not preserve, and what you preserve I will give to the sword. You shall sow, but not reap. You shall tread olives, but not anoint yourself with oil. You shall tread grapes, but not drink wine. The babe from Bethlehem comes with purpose. Simeon would have known this too. After all, other sections of the Old Testament, like Isaiah, would have reminded him of this suffering servant. Or the Psalms that we read on Monday, Thursday, and Good Friday, all of these prophecies give insight that there was something special about Jesus and in fact, there would be some conflict that would be brought through this son. Simeon received power from the Holy Spirit and enabled him to understand and to speak words of wisdom to Mary about her son. And Simeon blessed them and said to Mary, his mother, Behold, this child is appointed for the fall and rising of many in Israel and for a sign that is opposed, and a sword will pierce through your own soul also, so that the thoughts from many hearts will be revealed. You see, some will receive this babe in Bethlehem and follow, but some won't. The Son, the babe in Bethlehem, Jesus, our Savior, He came. He came for one purpose, and that was to obediently fulfill God's will for his life, which meant going to the cross. And thankfully, he does go to that cross. Because when Jesus dies on that cross, he takes away our sins and gives us a new life. A life worth living. A life that is meant to be in obedience in following that which our Lord and Savior would have us go following our Heavenly Father's will for our lives. And you and I, in the power of the Holy Spirit, are called to this life that is meant to be lived in Jesus. And it won't always be easy. Just like Anna. There was a prophetess, Anna, the daughter of Phanuel of the tribe of Asher. She was advanced in years. She did not depart from the temple worshiping with fasting and prayer night and day. And coming up at that very hour, she began to give thanks to God and to speak of Him to all who were waiting for the redemption of Jerusalem. Remember, Anna's life wasn't easy. Widowed after seven years. I suppose if you would say that somebody had a, a person to have a chip on their shoulder against God, maybe she was one of those people. But instead, in Anna, we see the example of one who follows God's will for their life, that trusts in the promises that God makes to those that are down and out. You see, she looked for the Messiah. She looked for a life better than the one that she had been given. She knew that God was faithful to His promises and that one day God would answer her prayers God would give her a new life, a better life. And what wonderful gift to be able to see that this truly was God's Messiah. His promise, the one that was coming for her and for all of those that were poor in spirit. We celebrate the babe in Bethlehem, but life is also about pointing to His second coming, that time when Jesus will come again. Now, we don't know when that is coming or when He is coming, but we do know the story. That Easter resurrection power, when He ascends into heaven on high to send His Spirit into our lives, but He leaves with a promise. A promise that He is 
coming again. And we wait and live knowing about this, this promise that we have in Jesus, that He is coming again. And until that time, we, like Anna, tell others about Jesus and give them the same hope that we have in our hearts too. Amen. And now may the peace which surpasses our human understanding guard your hearts and keep your minds in Christ Jesus until life everlasting. Amen. We continue with our worship by the giving of our tithes and offerings, which you are seeing put before you, the different options that you have for giving. And we certainly appreciate your continued giving, even though you haven't been able to make it here in person. A great reminder prayer found in our Lutheran service book, hymn number 781, puts this in perspective. We give thee but thine own, whate'er the gift may be, All that we have is thine alone, a trust, O Lord, from thee. Indeed, we are thankful for the blessings our Heavenly Father has given to us, and we pray that these gifts and offerings will continue his kingdom work among us. These are our um, Teen Jesus announcements this week. Teen Jesus is looking to start a group for moms with young children. We'll be hosting a brainstorming meeting on Saturday, January 15th at 10 a.m. in the Fellowship Hall. We hope to have a great turnout. To RSVP, please see the Team Jesus News. Also, we're forming a Team Jesus group for the Liberty 5K in March. If you're interested, please register for the run now as prices will increase after December 31st. You can see the Team Jesus News for details on how to register and how to get a discount. Next, there's a meeting scheduled for January 9th at 11.30 a.m. about our mission trip planned for June 2022. All are invited to attend whether you'd previously committed or are just now hearing about this. Finally, the church office will be closed on Monday, December 27th and Friday, December 31st of this week in observation of Christmas Day and New Year's Day. As always, you can check the Team Jesus News for more information about everything happening at St. Stephen. At this time, we now make confession of our Christian faith to the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the Scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead, and the life of the world to come. Amen. Give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks to the Holy One. Give thanks because He's given Jesus Christ His Son. Give
prayers this morning include Bob Howard recovering from heart surgery, uh, Carl, this is Anita Shaw's brother, with her with his continued battle with uh, pancreatic cancer. Prayers for Terry, this is a family relationship to Bunny Lowry uh, that is battling COVID. Also prayers for the Bennett family as Pam's daughter Gail passed away. And just prayers for all those that have lost loved ones, especially around this Christmas time. So let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Dear Heavenly Father, when the time was right, you sent your Son to be our Savior. We give you thanks and praise that you broke into our time and fulfilled your promise to save us from sin, death, and the power of the devil. Help your church never to be silent and to always bear witness to Jesus so that many others may learn of your great love for them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving Father, you created Adam and Eve as the foundation for healthy marital relationships. Continue to bless and bind all of our marriages. We rejoice with Daryl and Marla, Craig and Heidi, Pastor Joe and Eunice, Devin and Molly, Greg and Allison, Ken and Rosella, as they celebrate their wedding anniversaries. We ask your continued blessing upon these and all of our marriages so that we bring honor and glory to your name. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Protecting Father, look with mercy on the sick, injured, and recovering, especially Bob, Carl, and Terry. If it be your will, give them healing, restoration, and strength. Sustain and comfort those who mourn the death of loved ones, especially the Bennett family and all of those families that have lost loved ones during the Christmas season. Comfort those families that they may find hope in the resurrection of your Son. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord of life, you give us new life and the power of baptism. Help us daily to remember that you have made us your children in baptism. So we celebrate with Peyton, Emily, Trish, Renee, Bryson, Angie, Warren, Chase, Colton, Easton, Jean, Pat, John, Roger, Cindy, Alyssa, Richard, Tom, Michelle, Steve, Candy, Lisa, Kelly, and Rochelle as they celebrate their baptismal birthdays. Keep them and all of us in your baptismal promises. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God our Heavenly Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with and abide with you always. Amen.